Here we are on section 5.6 with the numbers to answers to number 7 through 12. Again, we're factoring, and so here are these five steps and everything we need to know in order to do this correctly. All right, number 7. Ooh, I don't like that. That's not in any good format at all. Let's write that out with the 16a squared first plus the 20a minus the 6. Okay, now let's look at it. Step number one, greatest common factor. Yeah, there's a 2 in everything. So that's 8a squared plus 10a minus 3. Oh, that got the numbers a little bit smaller. Now look, what is left? We've got 1, 2, 3 terms. Leading coefficient's not 1, so we're here on method 4. 8 times negative 3 is a negative 24, which we could have... Uh, 1 and 24 could times to that, 2 and 12, uh, 3 and 8, or 4 and 6. Um, and it's negative, so they've got to be opposite signs. We've got to add to a positive 10. We could do a positive 4 and a positive 6, but that doesn't times to a negative 24. We've got to do a positive 12 and a negative 2. Those are our ones that we got to work with. So 8a squared, that's a minus 2a plus a 12a minus 3. We just split up that middle term. We now have four terms, so let's chop that guy in half. Take a 2a out of the front. We get 2a, uh, 4a minus 1. And then here we can take a 3 out, plus 3, and we're left with 4a minus 1. Excellent, excellent. Now we can take the 4a minus 1 out, and we're left with that 2a over there, and a plus 3. Oh, good. So there's our two. Excellent, excellent. So now that we have those, hey, we're done. Look at that. There's our factoring right there. All right, number eight. Uh, we have do have three terms. Leading coefficient's not one, but we've skipped step one. We've got to look at step one, and yes, indeed, an x comes out. We're left with x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now we look, and what's left, it is a trinomial with leading coefficient 1. That looks like method 3 right there. So let's break it up. And what number multiplies to 2? Well, 1 and 2, and adds to a negative 3. Looks like a negative 1 and a negative 2 will do that. There we go, and have an x out front. Oh, good. Excellent. Okay, number 9. Um, ooh, this looks like a really big one. Uh, do, is there a greatest common factor in all of them? This guy doesn't have an x. That guy doesn't have any numbers. I guess not. So we're method number two where there are four terms. Okay, so let's split this guy up and let's see if we can get a binomial out of it. x squared and we have a 2x plus a 1. Okay, and negative 98 and a negative 49. What comes out of there? Well, if we have any hope of making this work, we got to pull uh, 49 out, minus 49. Does that really work? 98 divided by 49, yep, it really gives us a 2x. And we pulled a negative 49 out, so we have a plus 1. Oh, look at that. Pull that 2x plus 1 out, and we're left with x squared minus 49 and 2x plus 1. Um, but this guy's not done yet. Look at him. x squared minus 49. He can still go down. He's a special case. Difference of a perfect square of x and a perfect square of 7. So this is going to break up into x plus 7 and x minus 7. And then that 2x plus 1 stays there. So that's our fully factored form of that polynomial. Good. Number 10. Greatest common factor? Mm, I don't see one. Uh, three terms. Leading coefficient is 1, so we're right here. So uh, what does, multiplies to 63? Well, let me see. I have a 1 and a 63. Uh, 3 goes into it 21 times, and 7 goes into it 9 times. I think that's about it. And there we have it. Oh, I like it when it comes out like that. So we have x plus 7, and x plus 9. Good. All right, number 11. Ooh. We could try 25 times 100, but those numbers are really big. Can you see that we've got a greatest common factor? Don't forget that guy. 
Yeah, 25 comes out, and we have x squared minus 4x plus 4. Indeed. Now this guy, look at those smaller numbers. We see that we're on this method 3 right now with the leading coefficient right there, and that's x, x, and the things that times to 4, 1 and 4, or 2 and a 2, and those two add to a negative 4. So we've got minus 2, minus 2. Oh, and look at that. It was a perfect square. That's a perfect square, and that's a perfect square. So we could have checked to see if it was x minus 2. Yeah, just repeat it as a factor, or x minus 2 squared. So that looks pretty good like that. All right, number 12. x squared plus 8x minus 48. I don't see a greatest common factor. Uh, so we have three terms, leading coefficient. We're back here on number 3 there. And so it's going to be an x and an x. And then what do we get after that? We've got to take negative 48 and things that multiply to a negative 48 and add to a positive 8. 1 and 48, 2 and 24, uh, 3 and 16, um, nope, a 4 and a 12. Oh, that's our 1, and a 6 and an 8. Positive 12 and a negative 4 right there. Those guys add to a positive 8. So we're at negative 4 and plus 12. And there we have it. There's 7 through 12.